Hello, this is Ezekiel Dasho, and I'm going to draw and shade a cube. So just getting these first two lines defined for reference. And then lightly build the uh, square on the diamond shape on the top. And I am using a 4B pencil and I'm trying to use as light as a touch as I can. And that's so that later in the picture um, we've got lots of room to get darker. It's easy to get darker, it's harder to get lighter. And uh, so. my angle is a little bit different than the angle on the camera. Looks like I need to take this up a little bit here. So it's okay if it's not perfect. Uh, the main thing is to make sure your lines are parallel and to construct your cube with a, you know, using a light touch and the lines straight. It's part of this exercise is also doing this without a ruler and just using your hand eye coordination to make the lines as straight as possible. I'm gonna go ahead now and draw in the shadow um, that will give us a point of reference for the depth of the shading. So the, the line comes from about here down to here in this corner, if you'll notice the way the lighting is angled, lines up about with the other corner of the cube. So that's where I'm gonna make my turn or and this angle here kind of obtuse, looks like maybe, I don't know, 135 degree angle, something like that. And that line there is a little longer than one of the faces of the cube, so I need to bring it out a little bit more. Now, uh, this is almost a right angle, this angle here. So I'm going to go ahead and if you look at this side here, not to get all geometric, but it's about the length of a side of the cube. About the length, and it's, it's about parallel. Let's say that's almost exactly parallel, but not quite. Maybe a little bit angled away from because of the angle of the lighting. And then you'll notice there's almost a slight bend here the wrap around effect of the light so let's try to stay true to that and just draw this out to the connect so now we've got <clears throat> the simple construction of the form that we're looking at and i'm thinking i'm Thinking about starting by adding a layer of shading to the shadow. For now, let's just add one layer and I could probably angle this a little better, but this is okay. Um, this is easiest for my hand and in, in real life for when I was, if I was doing this without a video, I would probably turn the book a little bit so that I could I'll turn the page a little bit so that I could get the angle easier to use with my my arm. Um, and let's go ahead and add a, add another layer to this. The shadow. 
And one of the benefits of holding a pencil the way that I do, I highly recommend it. It's very far from my hand and for shading, it enables you to have a very light touch and it enables you to cover broad areas. You know, there are times when you were in a, you're doing some fine detail work, say, and you go to a more traditional uh, grip, but uh, a lot of times you don't even need to do that. So uh, right here you'll see there's this nice triangular shadow where it's a little darker than the rest of the I don't know if that's coming from my window or if that's coming from the studio light. I think it's coming from the window. But uh, it sort of goes off like this and then even extends a little bit beyond the, uh, the primary shadow, let's call it. And then it is, it is a shade darker, so we'll go ahead and... darken that up a little bit by one one shade and let's go ahead and shade our cube a little bit if you look uh, the top face is the brightest the left face is the so next brightest and the third face is the darkest um, there are some subtle lighting effects going on there but we'll handle that in a minute for now let's just get the the, the shade the cube lightly shaded and then we'll work from there so let's start with this uh, this top face and we know that's the lightest so we're just going to go as lightly as as we can and get the cube shaded there and it, this is a great way to practice hand control because you want to I mean the goal being like an even application of tone all the way, all the way throughout in like one quick pass but you can see I'm going back a little bit just to get the edges. Okay, so let's do this left face here. And much easier for me to hit that angle from where I'm sitting. And that is a little, a little bit darker. By, so let's increase the shading on that by a factor of one by just adding a layer of cross hatching doesn't have to be perpendicular. It can be um, probably be ideal to have it be perpendicular if you're at home, but that's just easier for me from where I'm sitting. Okay, and the third layer, let's make this one three layers of cross hatching. So the first, let's just do these verticals here. Quick, another pass at that. And then um, just going with the angle of the block here. And and then another another one maybe uh, like horizontals. And then I'm going to go ahead and uh, hit this edges a little more. You can see there's a, quite a bit of darkness um, from where the shadow is hitting uh, the block there, and the block's a little bit worn. So we can accentuate that a little bit. There's usually uh, the darks there look a little darker because they're adjacent to the brights on the top face. So um, adding a little extra darkness at that spot is going to make it look more realistic. Um, let's see. This, the block, the corners of the block are not exactly. 90 degree corners are almost a little rounded, a little curved, a little bit. The edges are a little soft. They're not sharp. Um, so it's okay if it's not uh, rigidly angular. And underneath the block here, there's this fine line that is a shadow. Get in there and get a detail of that. Um, you'll see here there's a reflection of the shadow in the black face 
where there's this triangle that's a little bit lighter here and that's a triangle that's a little bit darker here. So I'm going to draw this and go in here with some little circles to kind of add some extra depth right there so that you get the sense of this backlighting kind of in this uh, Now, on this side of the block, there is a little bit of a shadow underneath, similar to this side. It's not quite as dark, and it starts a little bit into the block. I suppose I could add a little more shadow to that, too. comes out a little here. Now there's this nice triangle here uh, that is a sort of a reflection of the shadow being reflected up into the glossy surface of the black but it's it's very light so I just want to give a hint of that um, this top corner could use a little more to differentiate this side from the top of the block See, we could go a little darker in here. Now the light's coming around and bouncing and then hitting up here and then bouncing back down here so it's actually darker on this side of the triangle than it is closer to the block. And then it's pretty dark here too because of the contrast area. Um, so let's, there's also, this is not quite dark enough for my liking here, so let's add a little bit there. Let's maybe bring this down just a little bit. Bring the shading on this a little bit more. And now I can add some more depth to this shadow too because I know that how, how what color my black is. And I think it'd be you know, it would look right to have the shadow be darker here. So the studio light is creating quite a bit of, casting quite a bit of shade and it's creating quite a bit of contrast. So that will definitely help it look. You see here, if you can look very closely, you can almost see the reflection of yellow and the, there's a shadow that kind of goes down there a little bit and it almost, makes it so that it's lighter, closer to the block. So I'm going to try to like delicately hint at that without really making it overstated at all. Cause if it can be delicate at all, your mind will just notice it, but, or, you know, but you won't necessarily notice it on the surface. It'll just kind of just be underneath the subconscious or whatever. I mean, visually, our minds just make so many analyzations and 
can see so much without us really actively thinking about what we're seeing. So I love doing I love doing these exercises because, you know, it's a great way to study how light plays with objects and I mean even these simple these simple objects it, you know you can put a lot of time into them and create something that's quite detailed and uh, it gives you a good chance to uh, practice shading on surfaces that are you know relatively angular and kind of well defined and easy to look at um, so I've, I, uh, I find that like if I do exercises like this and then I go back to figure drawing or portraiture or, you know, any kind of life drawing, I just like m my shading game is so much more on point than it would be if I hadn't practiced for a while. Um, you know, practice looking at things as well as practice the, the actual hand control of of uh, cross hatching. So, you know, this line here could be, I'm mean, gonna, you know, I can change my grip a little bit and get in there and put a sharper line there. And then also before I'm done, I wanna accentuate this little part of the shadow here a little bit. Um, now you can see up here, there is a little shadow coming from the window. You know, I, I'm not sure if I wanna, very lightly maybe, let's go for it, what the heck. It's, it's at a totally different angle to the rest of the block and there's another, there's another one kind of like that. And so if we can, as lightly as can be, just do that gentle suggestion there and then cross hatch it over like that. Um, that will, oh boy, I see another, I see another shadow here, this triangular, this triangular one we can do that too. So now it's starting to look more like there's natural light as well as artificial light in the environment, which there is. And I think this will wrap up this video on me drawing a cube, a block. And I hope you enjoyed it. I hope it was informative. If you like this video, please like and subscribe, smash that like button and I will see you in the next video. I'm probably going to just do a series of, of simple shapes, um, work on curves and different forms and different kinds of shadow and stuff like that. So see you next time. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.